Hey there, if you love yarn, you're gonna love today's video because we're doing a yarn stash tour. Hey guys, welcome back or welcome to my channel, Knee Knits. My name is Amy, I'm a knitter and we talk about all things knitting here. And today I'm gonna do a little yarn stash tour and show you guys what I have in my yarn stash. So in terms of yarn stashing, I have a pretty, I would say moderate sized yarn stash. Like I enjoy keeping yarn, I enjoy looking at it. It's kind of like a display piece in my apartment and I always find it convenient to have yarn ready to go if I feel the inspiration for a project Project or just I really want to work on something and don't feel like waiting for yarn to come in. So as you can see here, I don't keep my yarn here in the room that I'm filming in. So we're going to take a quick move out to where my yarn shelf is just so I can give you guys a little visual of all of my yarn. Hey guys, so we're here. This is my yarn shelf. I keep this out in the living room of our apartment. It's kind of dark back here, so I don't normally film my videos next to the yarn shelf, although that would be really fun in the future. Um, but anyway, so this is where I store all of my yarn. This is the, for the hardware, this is the Hauga cabinet from Ikea. It's this big, tall kind of bookshelf or bookcase, and it does have a little area at the bottom with doors, which I really like. So I keep all of my yarn in the open shelves, and then a lot of miscellaneous tools or things that just aren't as pretty get put in the shelves below behind the doors. So I have not really a whole lot of structure with where my yarn is on each shelf. Right now, this is like my working shelf. So everything that I'm currently working on, like all my project yarn, is gonna be in the shelf. It's just like at my reaching level, so it's really easy for me just to grab new balls of yarn as I'm using them in a project. And the upper shelves I use mostly for stash and things that I'm not currently using, but I do have plans for in the future. So just wanted to show off my yarn storage area, but we are gonna head back into the filming area so I can go through each skein of yarn with you guys. Before we dive into the yarn, I just wanna take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, the Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio. The Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio is a yarn shop located in Armstrong, British Columbia in Canada, and they also have an online shop that ships worldwide. They carry a wide variety of yarn brands like BC Garn, Sanus Garn, Noro, Jameson and & Smith, and countless others, in addition to knitting needles, notions, and other accessories. They have provided me with a discount code, NENITS30. If you use that code when you shop online, you'll get a 30% discount. Just a quick note, if you are shopping online, this note is more for my US viewers that the shop is in Canadian dollars. Feel free to check them out. They've gifted me a lot of the yarn that I am gonna be showing today. So I'm excited to show you guys what they have and what they carry, as well as using them in some of my upcoming knitting projects. So thank you to the Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's get into the yarn. I put all of my yarn into the Ravelry stash feature a few weeks ago, or maybe a, over a month ago by now. It took a long time, but I was really grateful that I did it. I was able to go through each skein of yarn one by one, catalog it, and Ravelry pulls up all sorts of statistics like the yarn weight, you enter how many skeins, and it automatically calculates the yardage. Once you have all of your entries in there, you can easily sort by weight by color. You can also add them to your projects and it'll show you which yarns in your stash are in your projects and which are not. And if, I think it's just a really useful way to have all of my yarn stash organized in an electronic way in addition to just having it out for me to see with my eyes. So because of that, I was able to get some statistics of my yarn stash, which is pretty cool. Now to define yarn stash for me and in this video, I'm going to specifically be referring to yarn skeins and balls that are not currently currently being used in my projects, and I'm not really gonna count scraps as well. I do have some full skeins that are left over from projects that I will be showing, but little scraps that are less than a full skein I'm not gonna be showing today. So in terms of full unused skeins of yarn that are not in any of my current projects, I have 90 skeins, and DK weight is my favorite weight apparently, which I kind of knew, I had a feeling that was gonna be the case. Around 30% of my yarn stash is DK weight. So I calculated out, or Ravelry calculated out, that I have a total of 18,808 yards of yarn, which is equivalent to 10 and a half miles of yarn if I were to stretch it all out. So that was kind of an interesting statistic. So I'm gonna be dividing this video into sections. I'm gonna categorize the yarn into either sweater quantities, less than sweater quantities, but not single skeins, sock yarns, and then lastly, we're gonna go over single skeins. So let's start with sweater quantities. 
So for sweater quantities, I'm keeping it broader to also include any sort of garment, like a, a top that I would wear. Um, so it could also be a t-shirt or a tank, which aren't exactly sweaters, but I'm gonna classify these yarns as sweater quantities as well. So one of the first yarns I have here in my stash is Filcolana Peruvian. Filcolana Peruvian is a heavy worsted or almost Aran weight Peruvian wool, 100% non-superwash Peruvian wool. I have the color charcoal here, which is this really nice heathered black. And my plan is to make a petite knit zipper sweater out of this. I bought this when I was in Sweden last year for work. And I also got the matching mohair. So I have a sweater's quantity of Filcolana Tilia in the color black. Tilia is a 30% silk. 70% kid mohair yarn, and I haven't used it yet. I've heard very good things about it, so I am excited to knit that up. I probably won't be knitting the zipper sweater until later this year. I'm kind of thinking on having it be like a late summer project so it can be finished right before the fall hits and I can wear it as a cozy outer layer. The next yarn I'm showing, and I'm realizing I don't really have a specific order for the the order of which I'm showing each of these yarns. So within each category, this is completely random. So this next yarn here is Sorella yarn, which is hand dyed, and this is classic DK. I have a sweater's quantity of this. This is the color Townhouse from the Autumn in New York collection that was out last year. So this is a superwash 100% merino wool in a DK weight. So you get 231 yards. This is a 100 gram skein. This is a very nice cream color and it has like darker cream shades in it. It's kind of hard to see in the skein, but I have swatched it up and it creates a really nice, almost tonal, but still kind of variegated effect with this cream color. I've talked about this a little bit in my podcast, but I am planning on casting on the Whitmore cardigan with this yarn. Really excited to get that on my needles, but hasn't made it on the needles yet, which is why that this yarn made the cut for the yarn stash tour. All right, so this next yarn here is a yarn that was gifted from the Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio. This is Lanes du Nord Matera. This is a DK weight 100% Italian merino wool, and this is in the color denim. It's a nice fluffy two-ply yarn, if you can guys, if you can see it up close. And I really like this color. I think it's a really nice flattering blue. I don't have any plans for this yet, but it's DK weight, so I think I could find a lot of patterns pretty easily for this. It's very squishy, it's very lightweight, and I think um, the two ply sort of helps with that. It's like, I feel like you get a lot of yards for not a lot of weight. So this is 50 grams and you get 160 meters, which is about 174 yards. The next quantity that I have, or sweater quantity, this is more of like a garment quality because I have enough to make a tank top with this Hobie Egyptian baby cotton. This is 100% baby cotton. It's really soft. This is a 50 gram ball, I believe. Let's see. Yes, this is 50 grams. You get approximately 170 meters, which is equivalent to 186 yards. This is in the color four. I don't remember the color name, but it's kind of like this off-white sort of dark cream color or like a bone color. I feel like that's a good way to describe it. I'm planning on making the camisole number five with this yarn. I think the cotton will be a great summer fiber, of course, and I think that tank has a really nice silhouette and in this neutral color, I think it would be a great wardrobe staple for the summer. This yarn was gifted to me by Hobie, so thank you Hobie for this. This next yarn is Lanes du Nord Vasto, also gifted to me by the Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio. This is an Aran weight version of the same merino wool that I just showed in the Matera. So this is in the color bottle, which is this beautiful dark sort of hunter or forest green. Just like the Matera, it's also a two-ply yarn, so it's very fluffy and very light. This is 50 grams and about 125 meters, which is 136 yards. I am trying to make the Dartmoor sweater with this. If you tune into my podcast, you'll know I'm having some issues with the gauge, so I might have to change the pattern for this yarn, but I really like this green color. It's very vibrant and saturated and similar to the Matera. 
I'll pull it out again. So similar to the Matera, it's very lightweight and fluffy, so I think it'd be a very comfortable sweater. So again, the Matera is the DK weight and the Vasto is the heavy worsted or the Aran weight from Lanes du Nord, which is based in Italy. This next yarn here I got while I was on my trip to Denmark last year. This is Heidholt Udspundery Handwerkskan. And again, excuse the pronunciation if that was incorrect, but this is an Aran weight, 100% Danish wool. It is in the color sand, which is this really nice off-white with some charcoal gray or black heathering. It is two-ply, if you can see here in the skein. Now, when I got this yarn, I was planning on making the weekend slipover v-neck by Petite Knit. She calls for this yarn, or she used it in her sample, and also held it with a silk mohair to create that vest. However, the more that I'm sitting on this yarn and looking at it and admiring it, the less I wanna use it with a mohair. I really wanna use it by itself so it can really shine and show off all of its qualities. So I'm kind of leaning more towards now making the Ingrid slip over with this, which would fit the yarn weight better without holding this with a mohair. I think the Ingrid sweater would really show off the yarn, especially with like the slight heathering. It would really make all that texture pop. And this yarn feels pretty rustic, but it also feels like with those kinds of rustic yarns that once you wash and wear it, it's going to bloom and soften and just become a beautiful fabric with weight. This next yarn here is Highland Alpaca DK by Estelle Yarns. Estelle is a Canadian yarn brand and this yarn was also gifted to me by the Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio. This is a, I believe DK weight, oh yes. <laughs> this is a DK weight yarn. It is, let's see the fiber content. It's 60% super fine alpaca and 40% highland wool. This is the color charcoal, which is pretty much as it's described. And you can see in the skein that it has a lot of drape. This is really soft and that definitely comes from the alpaca. I have a sweater's quantity in this, but I don't have a sweater idea for it yet. I definitely think it needs to be a sweater that's gonna benefit from drape, and I don't wanna knit a sweater that's gonna need to have a lot of structure because with the alpaca, you're not really going to get that. But it's very soft to the touch. I'm loving the color, you know, it's like black, but just a little off black, which I think is really flattering. This is your classic 100 gram skein, three and a half ounces. With this, you get 273 yards of yarn. Next up in my stash is this Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend in the color Whipped Cream. This is a 50% polyester, 50% cotton yarn. And you can see here, there's not much to it. It's just a solid, it's labeled as DK weight, but I wanna say it leans more towards worsted weight yarn. I did use this last year in my Riley tee in the color silver lining. I knit that up in the comfy cotton blend and the Riley tee is a DK weight pattern. And I found that the fabric was a bit stiff. Like I think the fabric was too thick for DK weight, especially for a summer tee. So I would probably use this more for worsted weight patterns. I have two skeins of this and these are massive skeins. This is seven ounces, so you get 392 yards, which is so much yarn. So I'm planning on making something summery with this. Again, the cotton, it's just a go-to summer or spring fiber. I haven't picked a pattern yet, um, but we will see. This is Juniper Moon Farms Patagonia Organic Merino in this gorgeous color violet. Just look at that deep purple. This is labeled as a sport weight yarn, although I've read that it can be used more as a DK weight. So Juniper Moon Farm is based in upstate New York, and this is also gifted to me by the Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio. I have a sweater's quantity of this. Again, don't really know what I want to make with it, but I just am loving and crushing on this purple color so much. So this is 100% wool. This is a 100 gram skein, and you get 382 yards, so great yardage. It also looks to be two ply and just holding the skein in my hand, it's very lightweight. It has a little bit, just the slightest bit of like a rustic feel on the outside. But again, very soft. I think this is gonna make a great sweater. I also have Santa Scarn Sunday. This is from the Petite Knit line, gifted by the Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio. I actually have two different colorways here, both from Petite Knit's line. This top one here is called Baby Blue Eyes, and this bottom one here is called Brick. 
So Sunday is one of my favorite yarns to use for sweaters. It's a fingering weight, 100% merino wool, non-superwash. They're sold in 50 gram balls. For each ball, you get 235 meters. The color range is spectacular, especially Petite Knit's color range. If you like Petite Knit and any of her patterns, she uses a lot of them in her sample pieces. These I am planning on gifting away to some of my close friends. I think that these colors will look really nice on them and I'm excited to share with them my favorite yarn to use. I do use this normally paired with a silk mohair. So when you hold it double, it creates sort of a DK weight fabric. However, this yarn is also great for spring and summer pieces because it's fingering weight. You can easily make t-shirts or tank tops with this and I think it would still be very comfortable to wear in the spring and the summer. This next section is kind of the in-between of single skeins and sweater quantities. So these aren't quite sweater quantities, but I do have more than one skein of each. So here we go. So this is Pure Gint by Sanis Garn. This is 100% Norwegian wool in a DK weight. This is the color Petroleum, which is this really nice sort of cool green. And I have three skeins of this, which is enough to make a hat. So I am planning on making a hat with this, most likely the Oslo hat by Petite Knit. Although I have not cast it on yet, it's probably gonna get casted on like any day now. So just made the cut for the yarn stash tour. But this Pure Gint is kind of rustic to the touch. It definitely has some like fuzzies on the outside of it, if you can see, which sort of add to not the itch factor, but it's definitely like a little on the scratchier side. Does not have the same softness as merino wool if you are used to that. The yarn is pretty tightly spun. I think it's gonna have great stitch definition and I'm kind of excited to see when I make the hat with this, how I like the fabric, cause I am really curious about how a sweater in Pure Gint would turn out. Cause it is pretty affordable compared to other Sanus Garn yarns. So if I could, enjoy Pure Gint in a sweater, that would be a win for me. <laughs> Next up, I have this Pure Sport by Yarn Matter. Yarn Matter is a hand dyer based in Austin, Texas. This is Sugar Plum Fairy from their Nutcracker collection that came out last December. It's this beautiful sort of warm, deep purple, and I have three skeins of this. My plan is to make a shawl with it, most likely the Barbara Shawl by Gregoria Fibers. This is a two-ply sport weight, 100% merino wool, non superwash. It is really soft. I'm loving the color and I'm really excited to cast this project on as well. Yarn Matter dyes with natural materials to create her yarns, which is really awesome. So it says on the tag what this was dyed with and it includes matter and logwood, which is pretty cool. I don't know what those are, but it sounds cool to me. So yeah, that's the skein here. So these are Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight Shetland wool balls, which are really cute. I've heard that they're used for color work. I'm not too familiar with Jameson and Smith, although I've heard that they're very popular if you're into color work as well as Shetland wool. So I was gifted these by the Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio, these three skeins. So these are the colors. Oh, they don't have color names. They just have color codes. <laughs> I'll type those down below in the description if you're curious. I'm not gonna read them out because you might not know but we have this nice sort of yellowy beige so these are fingering weights it is 100% real Shetland wool and 25 gram balls I also have this sort of dark moss green oh this is called moss green it's on the label okay I didn't just make that up from my head I think I subconsciously remembered that it was called moss green so this is moss green like I said and then we have this lighter sort of sage green. Sage green is not printed on the label, but that's just how I'm interpreting the color. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with these yet. Maybe I'll save them for one day when I want to make a color work sweater. These could be nice accents. Obviously I would have to get more for the main color, but for now, if. I need something, I will have these in stash. This is Wool in the Gang Al Pacino Merino. I got this at a local yarn swap that I went to a few weeks ago. I got two balls of this. It's 60% Merino and 40% Baby Alpaca. This is in the color Tweed Gray. It's this beautiful, as you can see, bulky weight, two-ply yarn, very fluffy from the alpaca, probably similar to the Highland Alpaca DK that I shared earlier from Estelle. 
So two skeins is more than enough to make a couple beanies. I'm thinking maybe like a neck piece, like a cowl or a scarf would be really nice just cause it's so fluffy and would definitely be very warm in the cold winter months. I do have another set of Filcolana Peruvian Highland wool. This is in the color Rosewood. I have two balls of this. So I have, these are 50 gram balls. So I have hundred grams total. I had bought these in Sweden with the intention of making Petite Knits Sunday socks. This is one of the suggested yarns, although this is a 100% non superwash wool. So I don't really wanna use this for socks anymore, just knowing that I personally prefer washing my socks in the washing machine. And I also want some nylon content to be in the sock yarn just to give it that extra durability. So with two balls of this, I think this is also enough for a hat, but I haven't picked a pattern to make with this instead, but it is this really beautiful berry pink color that I like a lot. And I've heard great things about the Peruvian wool. It's sort of like a workhorse yarn, pretty affordable if you can get your hands on it. Again, Filcolana unfortunately is not super attainable or accessible here in the US. If you know of any US carriers that sell it, let me know. But I do know that there are lots of European websites that sell Filcolana, but you just have to pay for the shipping to get overseas here. But it's this beautiful like four ply, worsted weight yarn, very tightly spun, gonna have great stitch definition. It's not merino, it's Peruvian, but it's really soft and it feels very durable and I'm looking forward to working with it. We're moving on to sock yarn. I keep all of my sock yarn in this little basket container just to keep it all contained. I have some full skeins as well as partial skeins, so I'll go through the full skeins with you guys right now. First up, we have Lion Brand Sock Ease. So this is Lion Brand Sock Yarn. It's a 75-25 blend, super wash wool and nylon. This is the color Cosmo, which is this really nice sort of pastel blend of light blues, light pink, sort of like a medium blue. And it looks like it has little speckles of kind of like a dark maroon color. So this is fingering weight. If I didn't say that before, you get 400 meters per ball. So pretty standard in terms of like sock yarn yardages and contents. I have started to make a pair of socks with sockies in a different color for Nick. If you watch my podcast, I talked about that recently. It's not the softest sock yarn I've felt, but it definitely feels like the kind of sock yarn that's gonna put up with the test of time. Definitely feels really durable. I'm excited to see how it washes or after the initial block, how it softens up and wears. So this is Lion Brand Sock Ease. This is a skein of Knit Picks Hawthorne. This is Knit Picks's commercial sort of hand-painted style speckle yarn. This is 80-20, so 80% superwash Highland wool, 20% polyamide. This is the color Penatone. It's this beautiful cream with these orange, blue, and like yellow speckles. And yeah, I'm excited to make some socks with these. I wanna make sort of like a cabled sock pattern with these. I think it will show off the speckles really nicely. And I like having sort of like the cream base just with like sprinkles of color. I think it's so cute. I also have a small collection of Filcolana Arweta. Filcolana Arweta is a fingering weight sock yarn. Again, I don't know why I keep saying that. This is like the sock yarn section. So these are all gonna be sock yarns. Um, anyways, so this is an 80-20 blend. I bought this in Sweden, again, on one of my work trips. This is the color Mustard. And I have three skeins of this, which is more than enough to make a pair of socks. It's also enough if I wanted to make an Oslo hat or a weekend hat by Petite Knit or any sort of DK weight hat. I have enough here in this color. This is the color Basewood. It's just this beautiful sort of sagey light green sort of like an artichoke green as well. And this is the color Red Squirrel. I just finished knitting up a hat with this. If you follow my podcast, you saw that. I still have a whole skein left over. I don't know if you can squeeze out a pair of socks with one skein of Filcolana. These are 50 gram skeins. So you have 210 meters. So you might have to make really shorty socks. I do have small feet, so maybe I could get away with it. But yeah, 
I don't know. I don't know what to do with this yet. This would also be good for like color work if I paired it with a different sock yarn for like a multicolored sock. Also in this basket, I'm not gonna go through all of these partial skeins, but I do keep all of my leftover skeins of sock yarn in here to sort of collect in sort of a neat little container. It also helps me visualize the colors. Like I can already see so many nice pairings for socks with multiple colors. Like if I wanted an accent toe and heel, or if I wanted to do color work socks, I have my pick there. Some of these are Filcolana Arweta. Some of them are from Sorella Yarn. There is an East Coast Yarn Co. skein in there. So this is what's left of my sock yarn collection. I am trying to get more into sock knitting this summer. So if you love knitting socks, feel free to send me any pattern recommendations. I've kind of been building up my favorites in Ravelry to refer to later on. And if you like sock knitting as well, I hope that you tune into my podcast this summer to see what I'm knitting. Now we're gonna get into the single skeins that I have in my yarn stash. I am gonna start out with silk mohairs. This is my mini silk mohair collection. A lot of these are left over from sweater projects. I just ended up with full skeins of mohair when I was done with the sweaters. So these, a lot of these I don't really have a plan for what to knit with, but I think I may maybe use them in like a big project together. Like a lot of these colors kind of coordinate, so it could be cute in like a stripey or marbling pattern. If not, they're just gonna sit in my sash until inspiration strikes. <laughs> So first I have this Santa Garn Tin Silk Mohair in Marine Blue. I just finished knitting a Monday sweater by Petite Knit with this mohair. So Santa Garn's Tin Silk Mohair is a little bit different from most where it also contains some wool content. So this is 57% mohair, 28% silk, and 15% wool. It definitely has like a little bit more of a like rustic feel than other silk mohairs. Like it definitely is silky smooth, but it's not as silky smooth to other silk mohairs and I think that honestly is just due to the fact that there's not as much silk content compared to the others and that wool sort of adds some added texture to it. So this color marine blue, super deep navy, I really liked holding it together with the Sanus Garn Sunday in deep marine to create a beautiful sort of variegated blue fabric. My other skein of tin silk mohair is, I believe in the color petroleum. I did buy this together with that pure gint that I showed earlier. It's like the matching color. I bought enough to hold with the three skeins of pure gint. So again, kind of like a hat quantity. I think I just have two of these. I don't wanna make a hat with mohair. I find it a little itchy, so I don't know what to do with these. I am gonna make the hat with the pure gint, but not hold it with this mohair. But this is just a really nice sort of emerald green color. Sticking with the green, I also have this single skein of Filcolana Tilia, which is, like I said before, 70% kid mohair, 30% silk. This is the color sage green. I just really liked this color when I saw it. I just picked up one skein, so again, I don't really know what to do with it. I think it would go nicely with the basewood green Filcolana Arweta that I showed earlier in the sock collection, maybe for a pair of wrist warmers or some sort of small accessory. So yeah, really soft. It does have sort of that lighter core compared to the halo of the mohair. I know some people find that attractive. Some people don't like that white core. I think depending on the final look of the fabric you're trying to achieve, you may like it or you may find it a little bit <laughs> annoying because it is gonna add some variegation to the finished fabric, especially if you're knitting with a color that's closer to like the darker mohair and not as light as the silk core. This is also Sanus Garn Tin Silk Mohair. This is in the color natural. It is, yeah, not much to it. Silk mohair, Sanus Garn. It's just like off-white color. I just used this to knit my Moby sweater. I held it with Double Sunday in the color white and I think it turned out pretty good. This is Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the color Mushroom Rose. Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair is one of my favorites. It's just so high quality. It's definitely on the pricier side, but I think it's worth the price you get what you pay for with this yarn. It is 70% mohair, 30% silk, and Knitting for Olive's color selection is just gorgeous. Like you can get basically any color you want from their collection and this color is kind of just like a neutral beige. I use this with my April cardigan that I knit last year. I held it together with some Santa Scarn Sunday 
and yeah, I have an extra skein of it. Pretty good neutral to have. I'm sure I'll find something to use this with eventually. This is my other skein or partial skein of Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. This is the color Dark Moose. It's just like a deep brown. Again, you can see it has the lighter color silk core. I use this in NYX Zipper Sweater Man that I knit last year. I held it together with the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the same color Dark Moose. Just a really nice dark sort of cool tone brown. This last mohair here is Angel by Permin. I also got this while traveling last year in Sweden. This is a Danish yarn brand, and this mohair is so pretty. It's multicolored, it's got some lime greens, some purples, some sort of yellow golden colors, and this by far is like the softest silk mohair I have felt. It's a 70-30 blend, but even compared to the Knitting for Olive, like I think that this is softer. I just have this single skein, so again, I don't really know what to do with it. I just saw it at the store and I had to pick it up. So I think holding it with a solid color, maybe like a solid green or purple would be really cute in some sort of accessory. Now we're getting into the single skeins of non-mohairs, so mostly wools. So I have this single skein of Classic DK from Sorella. This is the color Nolita from the Autumn in New York collection. It is this beautiful, mostly pink and cream and sort of dark mauve blend and I really want to make a hat with this some sort of beanie I'm kind of looking at the Musselboro hat and I think I can make it in one skein of DK I know most people knit the Musselboro with fingering weight single skeins so if you've knit it in DK let me know if one skein is enough because I only have this one it's 231 yards just a classic DK weight 100 gram skein this is Double Sunday by Santa Scarn I had this left over from my Moby sweater and this is 100% merino wool, non-superwash. It's a DK weight. This is the color white, so just your classic sort of bleach white. Very soft, very squishy and bouncy. It's got a pretty tight spin and I liked working with it. It had great stitch definition for the Moby sweater and I would definitely use it again. I have this single skein of Kobu by Lion Brand. This is 51% cotton and 49% rayon from bamboo. This is the color white and this is three and a half ounces or 100 grams So about 232 yards. I think this is about a DK weight yarn I knit the streamline tank in this last year made a really soft really drapey fabric that was perfect for the summer I wore that tank a ton and it was so comfortable. I do just have one skein So I'm not really sure what to do with this quantity But I think maybe I could hold it with some other summer yarns maybe in sort of like a color blocking or straight fashion for another warm weather garment. This is a custom woolen mills 100% natural wool skein that was gifted to me by the Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio. So this is all grown, processed, and made in Canada. So it's 100% Canadian wool. This is, I believe, an Aran weight wool. It's very firm, definitely rustic. I don't really know a color name. They just have a color number, but it's this beautiful like multi-white and gray sort of neutral wool. This is 100 grams. Oh, 112 grams, get a little extra. Um, <laughs> this is a two ply wool, so it says it's about 198 meters. So I think this would make a really nice hat, really warm hat, or also like a really nice pair of mittens. So yeah, that's this one. This is a single skein of Queensland Kathmandu. This is a blend of merino, silk, and cashmere tweed. Let's look at the percentage breakdown. This is 85% wool, 10% silk, and 5% cashmere. So this is a really nice sort of gray tweed color. You can see the lighter gray and black speckles twisted in there. This is an Aran weight 100 gram skein. So it looks like about a 208 yards. I also don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but it's really pretty. I was thinking mittens, but when I was sent this skein as well, I was like, wow, these kind of go well together. They kind of have a similar look and feel. So maybe I'll combine them in a project, but not sure yet. So yeah, this is that Kathmandu, really pretty, really soft too. I have a single skein here of We Are Knitters, the Baby Alpaca. I think I threw away the label, but this is the color Pearl, and it's this really nice sort of cool purple-toned gray. Like it, It's like a gray, but with the ever-so-slight tint of purple. 
super soft. I don't know the weight of this. I feel like this is 50 grams, but I'm not sure. This is about a DK or a worsted weight yarn, 100% alpaca, so it's super soft, gives great drape. I did just use another ball of this to make the Sophie scarf, and it's really soft around the neck, doesn't really cause me any irritation, and maybe I'll make another one with this for a gift or make a pair of wrist warmers. This here is a hand-dyed skein that I picked up on the Greater Boston Yarn Crawl last fall. I got this at Black Sheep Knitting, which is a yarn store in Needham, Massachusetts, and this is their in-house yarn, so I believe it's dyed by a worker or an employee of that yarn shop, which is pretty cool. So this is a DK weight cashmere merino blend, so it's in 80% merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon yarn. It didn't have a color name, but it's just this beautiful, I don't know how to describe it, like really light lilac. It's really like a pale purpley blue, and I love it. I'm definitely going to make a beanie out of this. I'm thinking a bothy hat. I think the ribbing would really show off this color really nicely, and it's just like different. Like I haven't really seen this color too much elsewhere and you know I love purples and blues so this is definitely up my alley. This next yarn gifted to me by the Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio is Jody Long Alba. This is a, let's see, 50% wool, 25% alpaca, and 25% viscose yarn. Really nice sort of aqua color. It's called Splash and you can see it has all these nice dark blue flecks on sort of like a teal base. It's kind of the same color as my cardigan which is funny because my cardigan is also with Jody long yarn um, but yeah this is a luxury tweed blend it says on the label and I don't really know what this is meant for because it gives me like summer fabric vibes but it is merino and alpaca so maybe it's too warm for the summer but in the single skein this is 100 grams you get 382 yards or 350 meters so there's definitely a lot in here it definitely can make a tank top but now I'm worried the tank top will be too warm. So yeah, you get a lot of yarn with this single ball. I don't have a plan for this yet, um, but I'm gonna keep it in my stash for a little while and see if inspiration strikes. So yeah, this is Jody Long Alba. All right guys, we're almost at the end. <laughs> I just pulled my last two skeins, so if you've made it this far, thank you for sticking around. This is Santa's Garden Sunday, like I said, my favorite yarn so far that I've worked with. It's just so high quality and consistent and just creates a beautiful fabric. So this is a leftover skein in marine blue that I had left over from my Monday sweater. This is really deep navy color and this is fingering weight merino wool by Sanus Garn and a 50 gram ball. And then I also have this ball here, which has been in my stash for a while. I got enough yarn in Sunday to make the Friday tee. It's petite knits pattern of a striped tee, and I got the red for the stripes, and I got a beigey brown color for the main color. Now, I ended up not wanting to make the Friday tee because it was an all over fingering weight broken rib <laughs> project, which just didn't sound exciting to me to do all that broken rib on tiny needles. So I repurposed the brown color yarn for my April cardigan. If you've seen that before, that's where the main color went. But I had this for the stripes that I didn't use and it's still in my stash. This is the color Deep Wine and it's just as it says, it's this beautiful red, sort of like a wine red, definitely deep and for the single skein, I don't know what I could get out of this. I may keep it for, again for like a striping project or hold it with another yarn to make a small accessory. Like if I get the matching mohair, I think I can make one of Petite Knit's like little bags, which would be super cute. Um, but yeah, this is also giving me like Christmas vibes. So I think making a little bag out of this that I could wear for like holiday parties around holiday time would be really cool. So yeah, that's my last skein. So like I said before, thank you so much for sticking around and listening to me going through all my yarn. I hope you felt inspired or ready to knit. I hope you got some knitting done as well while you were watching. Just wanted to remind you of the discount code for the Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio. Thank you again to them for sponsoring this video. I'll put it below on the screen as well as in the description so you guys can shop online there. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.